This week on Maker Update, Kitty Grabs Gold, a beer cooler that follows you, the Circuit Playground Express, Adafruit and Microsoft, Other Machine Co. and Bree Pettis, Tinkercad Lego Export, a great kit for gadget and toy hacking, and Maker Fairs. It's Wednesday, May 24th. I'm Donald Bell and welcome to another Maker Update. Man, I hope you're having a great week because I am having a just outrageously beyond my expectations kind of week. Uh, Maker Fair Bay Area, the panel went great. The kitty grabs back. The kitty kicked ass. We placed in every single race. We got gold in two of those races. And uh, you can watch the video of the Twitch stream uh, on Make's Twitch channel. I've got links in the show notes that are queued up right to the races. They're a little glitchy, but they're, they're still worth watching if you hang in there. It was one of the most intense and exciting things I've ever done. So thank you to everyone who supported my campaign and the wonderful, crazy people who came out to the races. It could not have gone better, and I'm already planning my car for next year. On with the show. It was a news-packed week for makers, so let's cover one cool project and then move on to news, all right? This week, I have to mention this autonomous Follow Me cooler by Hacker House. This is essentially a motorized platform designed to hold a cooler that compares its location to yours over GPS and then tries to close the gap. It's using an Arduino Uno with a parallax GPS module an Adafruit compass module, and a Bluetooth module, and it communicates to your phone to grab your location. The total cost of the project, assuming you already have a smartphone, is probably around $100. One of the biggest criticisms of this project is also what I kind of love about it, which is that there's no obstacle avoidance built in. If you go behind a wall, it's just going to keep ramming into the wall. But on the plus side, the design cuts out all the complex obstacle detection. Or to put it another way, it gives the community a chance to build onto it. Because the project is literally a platform, you could have it be just about anything. It doesn't have to be a cooler. I was thinking about using it to build up like a little crude cardboard R2-D2 that could follow me around. Or you could have it be like a bucket for candy when you're trick-or-cheating that could follow you around. Or both, really. Uh, You can find the code for this on GitHub, you can find the project notes on Hackster, and you can find all the links in the show notes right here. And now for news, this week, timed with Maker Faire, Microsoft announced that their free web-based Make Code software is now compatible with a new version of the Adafruit Circuit Playground board called the Circuit Playground Express. So there's a lot to unpack here. First off, the new board from Adafruit is the same form factor as the original, essentially designed like a circular Arduino, but with oversized input-output spots on the board that are easy to connect alligator clips to. It also has built-in color-changing LEDs, a built-in speaker, a ton of sensors, and buttons that you can assign to different things. With the new design, you get a faster processor, the ARM M0, That can also handle Microsoft's MakeCode or JavaScript or CircuitPython in addition to traditional Arduino code. The board sells as a kit for $30 or a loan for $25, which isn't bad considering all the bells and whistles baked into it and the fact that it can be programmed four different ways. Now the other part of this announcement is Microsoft's MakeCode support, and honestly I hadn't heard about MakeCode until now. But if you go to makecode.adafruit.com, You can program a virtual board using a scratch style block interface or toggle over to JavaScript. You can watch all your code simulated on the virtual board and then you can pull up example projects and tweak them how you want. To load the code, you plug in the board over USB, hit the reset button twice, and it pops up like a USB drive. You download the code to the drive and the board automatically updates. It looks so easy And I know it's geared more for students, but part of me wishes all boards work this way. In other news, at Maker Faire, Autodesk did a presentation on new features coming soon to Tinkercad. These will include the ability to export directly to Fusion 360, an export to Lego feature, and the ability to import circuit designs to create enclosures. It all sounds great, and the price will still be free. One final bit of news, Other Machine Co., maker of the Other Mill Desktop CNC Mill, has been sold. And the buyer 
is none other than Bree Pettis, former CEO and co-founder of MakerBot. And despite all the drama of the MakerBot story, I'm excited to see Bree stepping back into the Maker community. Danielle Applestone will still serve as CEO, and she seems genuinely excited about the acquisition. It's going to be fun to see where this goes. It's time once again for a one minute review of an uncommon but totally useful tool brought to you by my friends at the Cool Tools blog. This week we're gonna talk about the iFixit Essential Electronics Toolkit. It sells for around $25 on Amazon Prime and by using the link in the video description here, you help to support this show and the Cool Tools blog. I've had this kit for around a year now and it's especially great for opening up and repairing or hacking my kids' toys or any electronics with small screws. When a toy breaks, especially an RC car, this is my one-stop triage kit. It comes in a hard plastic shell with magnetic corners and the lid is designed with this raised grid inside that works great for grouping together little screws and bits as you go along. Which just right there, that alone shows you the kind of attention to detail that went into this kit. Inside, you'll find a great set of tools for separating out the layers of delicate electronics like smartphones or tablets. If you're lucky, you'll never have to use it for that, but I've done an iPod touch screen repair with these same tools. You also get a pair of precision tweezers and a metal jimmy tool that's good for gently prying things apart without cutting yourself. Mostly though, I keep coming back to this kit for the screwdriver. This is like the Maserati of precision screwdrivers. It's a magnetized metal handle that comes with 16 bits that run from Phillips and flat to exotic pentalobes and security bits. It's a great price for what it is and you'll feel like a pro every time you use it. If you've suffered through using these cheap jeweler screwdrivers that chew up your fingers, then you've earned this upgrade. You support this show by using the link in the video description, so thank you for doing that. And you can see thousands of other reader recommended tools like this at cool-tools.org. Speaking of cool tools, for those of you who enjoy their podcast but wish it came out more frequently, they've launched a Patreon to help them ramp up to a weekly release schedule. There are some great perks and you can find out more at patreon.com slash cool tools. Maker Fairs, the mothership fair just wrapped up, but Maker Fair season is still just getting started. This weekend, we have a ton of global fairs, including Liege, Belgium, Adana, Turkey, Izmir, Turkey, Vilnius, Lithuania, Lomé, Togo, Strasbourg, France, Torino, Italy, Gibsons, British Columbia in Canada, and Chisinau in the Republic of Moldova. A lot of those are first-time fairs, which is really exciting to see. All right, and that's it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can see new maker updates every Wednesday. And, uh, and check out that iFixit toolkit if that's something that interests you, that helps to support this show. If you're not interested in it, you could leave me a thumbs up or you can leave me a comment. Those both feel great when I see those, all right? So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. <laughs>